The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. And as always, we meet at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So, what do we have going on today? Well, certainly after a bad day at BlackRock yesterday, a uh, little bit uh, less disconcerting today. Uh, this is the second day of options rollover. Generally, the market uh, movement will be... Um, for the next few weeks will probably be set tomorrow. So, again, I don't put too much weight on expiration or the couple of days after it. Uh, generally, they don't always have and aren't always a counter trend move, but generally have a lot more to do with options uh, going forward. And this may be the most important options uh, rollover where, uh, you know, options are taken off and new ones are putting on because this pretty much takes a September, October and into November uh, over the next uh, week or so. A lot of uh, 30, 60, 90 day options are going to be put out. And so uh, we'll keep an eye on it. But the uh, the idea is that you probably or at least I do uh, put uh, whatever moves of whatever magnitude they are at about half the weight that I would uh, in the coming weeks. Um, so is it uncommon to get major dislocations uh, during options rollover, mostly because they have to get these on or off. And if they have to uh, blow the thing up to get them done, it's not beyond the scope of reason for them. But, uh, again, a lot of this stuff uh, can be just uh, smoke in the rearview mirror as we go forward. If it can, starts to continue, uh, then you probably want to start weighing uh, the market a lot more. Now, could we just be seeing incredibly light volumes again into Labor Day? We could. That could be on the upside or on the downside. Uh, generally, that would be the side that you would want to – uh, probably fade after Labor Day because generally if you go into Labor Day with a, a light volume uh, down move, then you're probably going higher. If you go into that with a light volume up move, uh, then September generally can be or more than likely will be uh, a September to remember on the downside. 877-927-6648. Email me at path at tfnn.com and you can always put a message in the den. Okay. We got a few things going on. Uh, so let me just update this to make sure that I'm in like Flynn. Down six and a half points on the S&P cash, down 153 on the Dow. NASDAQ's up 20, Russell's up two, crude oil's up uh, 350 or almost 4%. Uh, gold's up about six tenths of a percent, 1759. Silver's up 10 cents. So, yeah, as far as things go, pretty quiet day, as I said, after a very bad day at, or two at BlackRock. Not the company, the movie, if you have not seen it. A great Western. Okay, uh, let's see. I know we got some emails here, so let's go to those first. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to add too much to that. Not going to add that much. Uh, I'm not going to add that much. Okay. Uh, 
Um, okay, let's go ahead to the first thing I wanted to talk about today because um, I wanted to wait a few days. This uh, news came out last week. I wanted to see how uh, Carvana uh, was actually responding to the news. If you missed it, uh, for the second time, they've been kicked out of doing business in a state in the United States. Uh, that state is Illinois. Uh, to, 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 let's go back here and look at it. Um, had been good since that news really hit. Of course, the market's been pulling back a little bit. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with this, this is a, a company that really is an intermediate car uh, seller. Uh, they transfer car uh, cars and titles. If you've got a car that's probably not the most uh, in demand at the moment, let's say it's a, just an average Toyota or a Hyundai or something, uh, you go to their website and you buy it from them. They actually buy it from another company and then deliver it to you. Well, what the problem is, it's not always plain who's got the title. And it's not a game. Title, title, who has the title. A lot of times... Um, cars are, are known what is on uh, are called a floor plan and that is that they are uh, financed and once and a lot of times uh, the the floor plan is actually assisted by the car manufacturers to some extent so what car dealers tend to do uh, is hang on to the title as long as possible and therefore be able to carry on their fuller plan and use other people's money. As I said, a lot of times uh, this can be like one and a half percent. And there are some kind of severe uh, penalties in some states on whether or not you sold a car and not delivered the title. Uh, Illinois, as I said, uh, it's been sometimes 90 days or longer before uh, buyers in that state have gotten the title from Carvana. But uh, this may be one of the things, and that is that you're dependent on Carvana being pretty much Johnny on the spot, making sure they get that title for someone else. And uh, I don't know if this is a issue that will get worse, but uh, certainly over the last year or so, uh, it hasn't been a positive for Carvana. But uh, maybe somebody's done some business with them. They want to call in today. That'd be good. Or email me about your experience. Uh, some people say it's good. Some people say it's bad. Uh, in my experience over time, there's always the point where at the very end, no one gets their money. And in probably in this thing, nobody gets their title. And it's very unclear in all this if uh, the music stops uh, who is going to be the biggest loser and generally that's always the customer because uh, they'll make you sue to get whole again but uh, and maybe somebody else can tell me anyway Carvana yeah, running a little bit of foul of Indi uh, Illinois but uh, my guess is this is uh, well we know it's been going on in the rest of the state but uh, just be careful if you're going to use them and let me know if there's maybe some value I'm not or I'm missing uh, on CVNA. We'll be back in a minute. In a time of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Somebody in the den said, uh, half glass full, half glass empty. I say, big me, uh, bring me a 48-ounce uh, big gulp, is what I say. But uh, that's just me. Anyway, uh, we'll keep a close eye on it. Volume uh, is the first thing I'm looking at here today. And as we said yesterday, we were doing a little bit over six and a quarter billion shares and uh yeah we got about 6.2 right now so we're a little under the run rate yesterday but certainly yesterday wasn't a big volume day if we looked at the uh, dollar volume it certainly was uh fairly light too uh, and that would indicate that a lot more action or many more shares were a little bit more on the small cap side that were traded yesterday. So we may be seeing a few of those small caps bottom out or wash out first. But that's kind of, uh, eh, probably not going to do a whole lot for the indexes. But keep an eye on those. Uh, first question we have today is take a quick look at Apple. And see finally got back to this gap higher that goes back to the 10th and see uh, 10th So you gapped up on 70 million shares. Today you got about 35 million shares. Yesterday you had 69. So you really came into it with the same volume. Tie kind of goes to the runner. Uh, today, 35, and you've gone just a, a tad lower, so that's a little bit better. But uh, eh, does it look rosy? Probably not. Let's go back to some of the other ones we looked at yesterday real quick, and then we'll get into some history. The SMHs... Uh, gap down yesterday was fairly light 
as we said, probably didn't think that was much uh, or didn't have much to say that it was lower. Let's take a look here. That is the 23rd. SMH. Why does that say it's up one? There's something wrong here. Okay, let's do this. Da, 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 da. Okay, there we go. Um, that was the gap from yesterday. Here's the the bar for today. Okay, uh, to two. Let's see. Okay, what are we doing here? Okay, so kind of sideways action. We went into the low of uh, 6.8 and a half million shares on the 9th. Yesterday we had 3.5. Not much of a bounce today, certainly light volume, which you would like to see and continue until and if the market starts moving higher. But uh, yeah, 1.7 billion shares are ready. So a fairly quiet day on the Western Front for the SMHs. We'll get to the rest of those in a minute. I uh, wanted to do a little history, and then we'll move on. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. And see. Uh, on this day in 1939, Germany and the Soviet Union signed a non-aggression pact. And, of course, uh, stunning the world given their diametrically opposed ideologies. I, 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 I can't even talk today. Ideologies. But the uh, dictators were, despite appearances, both playing into their own political hands. Supporters of the Bolsheviks around the world had uh, their heretofore romantic view of international socialism ruined. They were outraged that Stalin would enter into any kind of league with a fascist dictator. And, of course, uh, he would later go and kill more people, his own people, uh, than Hitler would ever. On this day in 1939. 877-927-6648. Okay. Well, certainly question about CCJ. Uh, nice looking move off the low. Uh, let's take a look at that real quick. Uh, somebody says they were both for government having total power. Well, what I always say is I think uh, Stalin and Mao both got the uh, got the short end of the stick when it came to Hitler. They both killed more people than uh, Hitler did. Uh, but Hitler gets all the love. So what can you say? Uh, you got a nice move up here. You really have to say that you went back into support for and bounced off of it but uh, the whole sector for energy uh, looks very good as we said yesterday it's hard to pick anything in energy that will probably do bad uh, and we'll look at UNG here in a minute you got the gap up in the XLE too uh, and CCJ kind of moves with it so uh, take a look at that. Um, volume's okay on the XLE today. You did gap above the previous gap lower that had more volume. Uh, but uh, I think uh, with what the Saudis said uh, yesterday, which we talked about just briefly, I think it took a little while for it to sink in uh, for uh, the market. But uh, they're going to raise prices in September. And I don't think anything really is going to change that much. Uh, the, of course, the Saudis saying the futures um, are not reflecting reality of uh, the supply and demand in the market. There was probably just a little too many people on the uh, long side, and they all got washed out now. My guess is that the futures will probably come back and uh, in, and uh, that's going to be higher prices all through the winter. I can't see that much changes since then. Uh, to two, okay. Uh, okay, yep, good deal here. Okay, what else do we want to look at? Question about the XLF as we look at that, and then we'll go to the usual suspects when we return after the bottom of the hour. Uh, what do we have here on the XLF? Uh, 
you had the gap up on the 10th of August. You did that with 45 million shares. Got into it yesterday with 36 million shares. Got a doji out here today. And again, a lot of people talking about a potential top. Um, I, I would say that, you know, why we had some decent moves down. If you're really looking for the pattern I like that says it's the end of the world, uh, that is one more attempt to go higher on lighter volume and then give it up on a 3x3 three three or a 7x5 displaced moving average. So ideal, uh, the most bearish thing here probably be a move back up uh, into over the next week but then fail. And uh, then you'd have what is normally a tough September anyway. We'll be back after this. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. we returned uh, kind of interesting somebody was uh, I was talking to somebody uh, one of my subscribers in the den uh, privately and uh, we were talking about uh, energy itself I just thought it was incredibly uh, interesting that yesterday for the S&P 500 the most shorted stock was oxy so I wasn't very surprised to see it pop higher today it has not held the previous high so far but you had a huge sign of strength on the 19th, uh, kind of an inside day yesterday, and now a push back higher. But um, my guess is that you're probably um, getting ready to break through the $74 level and uh, energy stocks once again probably heading higher. It was not the only stock that uh, was seeing real weakness. 
uh, yesterday, or let me put it this way, supreme bearishness. Um, Occidental had 38% of all shares yesterday uh, instantiating a trade as a short and uh, 30 over 30 on Devon Energy. Uh, Devon Energy, a little weaker uh, than that. Of course, a little well less well-known. As I said, uh, most of the love on the downside was coming to smaller cap stocks instead of the larger ones. But uh, you did get a nice little move into this gap lower that goes back to the 13th of June. That had 15 million shares down. You got about 12.6 now. So you're going to have about the same energy. It's just been kind of low coming off the bottom. Um, so uh, there are a couple there. There's some others. In fact, we'll take a look at them. Uh, there's always the, what I call the usual suspects, which is AMD and uh, NVIDIA and Netflix and Tesla, uh, of uh, those always being highly shorted in her day. Uh, we got some other new ones out here, but uh, yeah, we'll look at them. Uh, to, to, to question, is the XLE an island bottom? Uh, XLE, take one more look again, and that's for Hector. And the Holly six barrel, six pack. Uh, to, to, okay. So you gapped up above this gap down on the XLE. That gap down had 58 million shares. You only have 20. Um, yeah, is it that more of a pop and a down trend? It uh, could be. Now, I, I guess the question is whether or not we're looking at the July 14th low as being uh, a island bottom or abandoned baby, depending on how you like the terminology. I had a good time, I don't know if it was last week, it was probably last week, uh, giving all kinds of uh, names for candlestick patterns that probably wouldn't fly in today's uh, woke world. Uh, but uh, eh, if I ever make my own pattern, I've got a few names now in the quiver that I can go back and use. Of course, uh, they'll all be like mangled baby ducks or, you know, something like that. Uh, eh be something that people won't like to use but uh, yeah abandoned baby uh, kind of that kind of stuff uh, island reversals yeah just depends what terminology you like so the question would be do we get another one maybe he's asking do we get another one if we gap lower tomorrow and of course uh, we'll have uh, AEI numbers tonight and EIA numbers uh, along with the EIEIO uh, tomorrow at 10:30, and uh, that would be it. Uh, eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. We've got a few more things to look at here. Um, oh, we didn't go through AMD, which is always interesting because uh, so many people are shorting these that you always get interesting action at least at some point during the day did go to a slightly lower low yesterday with 61 million shares uh, today you got about 41 million shares so you're probably going to be a little lighter maybe 50 million shares by the end of the day uh, you had some big up thrusts uh, just above this price point uh, so yeah I suspect we're getting a lot of short sellers in now that will probably end up being cover or probably cover next week into the lighter volume going into uh, Labor Day weekend. Okay, question about my comments earlier about China. Um, one of our uh, senior fellows in the Tiger's Den, known as Dudet, uh, made a comment about four o'clock uh, in the morning because she's over in the UK, I think maybe. Anyway, our senior fellow uh, uh, man with boots on the ground, except I think she's a woman with boots on the ground, was bringing up uh, that there was a nice little pop about 2.40 in the morning. I just happened to be up uh, and the dogs uh, jumping on my head saying they had to go out. So uh, I took him out, came back on. Of course, you can't go back instantly to sleep after you've walked around with some dogs. So I turned on the TV and watched a little Bloomberg. It's always interesting to see just how different uh, the Bloomberg channel is and what they talk about uh, when it's aimed at uh, Europe and China uh, for theirs. It's uh, You get a very different take than the U.S. 
uh, folk here and what they like to talk about, which is a very, uh, I'm going to say, narrowly focused uh, New York view of the stock market, uh, where you get, I think, a better world view uh, in the middle of the night from the uh, from uh, Bloomberg. But they did bring up uh, the uh, dip that she talked about. I think they uh, it ran it down about 24 points real quick and came back. It was about China. And there was a, a lot of stuff. It wasn't uh, easy to digest, but it basically came down to this. And that was that there were a lot of uh, news coming out of China about how they had uh, – the government was trying to force uh, banks to make loans, but no one wanted to take those loans. And I guess the numbers and the, the discourse about that uh, didn't uh, go very far. Like I said, it, they were, I think the market was about flat at the time. It went down to about minus 25 on the S&P cash. And then, of course, pretty much recovered and were eh, flat-ish, I'm going to say. Not a whole lot of difference to where we were when the dogs uh, so rudely awoken me uh, at uh, around 2 o'clock or so, 2.15 in the morning. But uh, that was it. I got to watch it live. But uh, I don't know if there's a whole lot more to that. Uh, at least the people that uh, did the follow-up uh, were talking that uh, the banking system of China does have a lot more problems uh, than us Western folk are giving them credit for. 877, uh, yeah, mu much more for Bloomberg in the middle of the night than during the day. But um, I thought, you know, just for a test at about 9 o'clock, I wanted to turn Bloomberg back on and see if they were talking about anything that they were talking about at 2.30 in the morning and almost nothing. It was all very focused to exactly what uh, the New Yorker uh, Wall Street guy wanted to hear. It didn't seem to me like there was much in it for anybody that wasn't a big-time investor or somebody invested exactly in uh, the politics of uh, not the state so much, but even the city. Um, so there wasn't a lot of, uh, uh, what did I say, viewpoints from outside of the citadel itself. 877-927-6648. Again, uh, looking for what's going on uh, tomorrow. A lot more than today because of options roll over. When we come back, we'll look at DocuSign. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. As we uh, come back, uh, to, 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 oh, we were going to talk about DocuSign finally coming back. Eh, 5569 is the low. It kind of got tested, didn't quite get there on the 30th of uh, June. Got down to a low of 6048. What is that right? No, that's the high. 5738. So it's still a couple of bucks above it. Uh, but that had about uh, two and a half million shares lighter uh, than that. Uh, June 16th low. Uh, the uh, downside uh, here today, 2.8, 2.9 million shares in the last no, uh, known loan uh, low was 2.9. And then you get uh, back here on the 30th with 5 million shares. So you're getting back into support. You're getting back with it uh, with lighter volume. But uh, I would certainly like to see a retest of this June 16th low on much lighter volume. Of course, uh, one of the big losers of the day uh, was Zoom, one of the other uh, lockdown. What? Uh, why is that doing that? Zoom Technologies. Is that right? That's not the right thing, is it? It's not the same one. Oh, ZM. Okay, that's why it is. Um, we'll look at that. Yeah, thanks, Duffy. Um, why did I? Yeah, I hate that. Shouldn't Zoom be Zoom? Let Z, let let my people go and let Zoom be Zoom, not ZM. Um, you're getting a high volume test of the previous low of uh, 79. So still have a great deal of the lockdown specials uh, coming down with heavy volume. With this much volume, you're going to test 7903. So I would say any of the rest of them are probably in a basket of deplorables. Uh, and uh, you want them to actually test that May 12th low out here and with all the volume you have to make a question of whether or not 79 could even hold on this although this is a huge gap lower and uh, you do have some gap downs out here but uh, we'll see I always thought it was very weird that this thing was valued so much more than Skype was it it was better uh, I don't think it was that much better it was really uh, uh, being applied to a much different part of the market, but not one that anybody could a actually ever not duplicate, which uh, you always want to worry about barriers to entry for any big company, especially one with huge growth, because someone else can do the exact same thing. It's really not that special, uh, which has always worried me on stocks before. It's kind of one of the first things I think about uh, if I'm looking at something longer than a week away on a trade, and that is, are these people doing something that has some kind of magic that they can either patent or literally is some kind of intellectual property that would be very tough for other people uh, to do? Um, 
But, uh, yeah, it looks pretty horrible. Now I was thinking about yet another stock that I wanted to pull up. Eh, that has put... Uh, Zoom and its cousin TikTok are spy vehicles? Well, certainly we know TikTok is. I always thought that anybody that uh, when they uh, when they let uh, TikTok uh, off the hook, uh, that it was uh, that someone had to be paid off by the uh, uh, Chicoms themselves because too many people have disassembled the code for TikTok and they all know that it's sending huge amounts of uh, data back. Um, but you know what? It's not any different than Apple. Uh, we know that Apple has its own, uh, it's found its own uh, fingers in the pie. And that is, uh, you would think if you used a VPN uh, that your communications were uh, and uh, anywhere you went on the Internet was not being tracked uh, by third-party apps on the phone. Well, you know what? Apple says that's a feature. Yeah, you may have a VPN, but we're going to let that data leak to anybody that wants it anyway on our platform. You probably shouldn't be using a VPN. And I think it's been over the last few days that that's kind of filtered out. I don't know if that's the reason that Apple has pulled back to support here today. But uh, yeah, for the people that have been talking about privacy, yeah, pretty much miserable hypocrites uh, for that. And uh, we found out a lot more about it over the you – know, security is always that way. Someone kind of says, hey, there's a problem here. Apple and the uh, big tech press say, no, there isn't. Uh, it's just conspiracy theory. Move along. Don't want to see anything here. But then a couple other people go, well, yeah, we've done the same kind of test. We found the same thing. And they go, yeah, but that was last week. We just brought it up. And then, of course, a few more people come along and then go, yeah, no, you're lying. You're just lying sacks of, uh, of uh, cow poop. And, of course, uh, then it becomes kind of a thing. Apple has a lot of uh, goodwill on its balance sheet, uh, mostly because of that privacy and the ads, uh, kind of a black eye on them for uh, basically – trying to give lip service uh, to letting their operating system not just be a spy mechanism uh, for others. My guess is including governmental agencies, some with ill intent. But, uh, you know, it was came down with the market. The real question is, will it have any staying power? And uh, I know the first question will be, is Android any better? Well, you never know totally, but at least to this point, yes. If you do something with a VPN on Android or on Windows, uh, it doesn't leak where you went. 877-927-6648. You got uh, about a minute to get in. And that was it. But, uh, okay. Um, question about Tesla. We'll look at real quickly here before the break. Um, okay. Yeah, you're still going. As long, again, uh, the old story from uh, uh, Warren Buffett is uh, you only know uh, who's uh, swimming without a bathing suit with the tide goes out. And right now, with limited deliveries of competing products, Tesla is probably still okay. My, f my feeling is that uh, the superior ground game of Ford and General Motors and BMW, um, there'll be a tipping point. And that will be some point where Tesla no longer is selling the uh, preponderance of EVs out there. And it's uh, kind of like the story of the guy that went bankrupt. Uh, it was little by little, then all at once. Uh, there'll be that tipping point, and that's where I think Tesla is going to have to compete with a bunch of other folks. Twenty grand uh, additionally for their self-driving uh, vehicle software that will still run over bicyclists and motorcycles. Um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. Nobody else is doing any better, but still, twenty grand for the self-driving option that doesn't work quite correct. We'll be back in a minute.
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As uh, we return, question... Uh about uh, DLR, take a quick look at this one. I haven't looked at it in a couple of days. See, um, again, this is uh, one who um, I, I, I get uh, a couple of email lists who tells me uh, who's a, on uh, CNBC and Bloomberg and what they're talking about. Uh, I saw that uh, one of the big uh, short sellers in DLR uh, was on at noon. He was the same gentleman that shorted uh, Enron, and he says there's a lot of problems with the books here. On a chart basis, eh, coming down on fairly decently lighter volume, you still have a fairly decent high out here with some volume. Um, of course, interest rates are tough on any kind of realty trust. Most people don't know that uh, the 1929 dust-up, a little flesh wound in the stock market, in 1929, 80% of the losses were in REITs and probably not going to change anything in the real near time future. And that is because uh, REITs tend to be the most heavily leveraged toward real estate. So you know, you could, the question is, uh, you know, on a chart basis, do these guys look uh, maybe okay? 
my guess is that by the time we get to Friday and uh, Jackson Hole's uh, speech by uh, Jay Powell, uh, it's probably going to be a wash. I think everybody uh, saw his preemptive uh, bombing of Dresden over the weekend and, and into Monday as a uh, precursor, and the news is in. Sell when you can, not when you have to. Got a little World War II reference there for you history buffs. So when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.